instrument tracks are perfect for working with MIDI, especially when working with software instruments and external sound modules. They also have some other creative uses, but in this video we are going to demonstrate how they work with software instruments. To create an instrument track, go to the menu bar up to Track and New. In this window, you can select Instrument Track right here in this drop-down menu. Now often, I find people get confused as to whether they should make their instrument tracks mono or stereo. And while putting a mono software instrument on a stereo instrument track won't change anything, putting a stereo instrument on a mono instrument track will change and limit the sound dramatically. So when in doubt, use a stereo instrument track. We will leave the track at ticks for its time base and hit create. Once we have our instrument track, we can go ahead and load a virtual instrument in the first insert slot. But if you can't see your inserts, make sure you go to your Edit Window View selector and click on the drop down and choose Inserts A through E. Once you've done that, go ahead and click on the first insert, go to Multi Channel, and go to Instrument. And here you will see a list of software instruments that are available for you. Now, I've got some extra virtual instruments because I own some third-party libraries. But Pro Tools does come with its own virtual instruments. Expand 2 being one of them. So let's go ahead and load this one. Once the virtual instrument loads, it's important to make sure that the instrument routing is correct. And while Pro Tools will likely do the routing for you, it's a good idea to have the instrument view also available to make sure that it routes to the instrument. To do this, again, go to the Edit Window View selector and make sure that you've selected to view the instrument properties. Here, I can tell that it is routed properly because I can see a 1 next to Expand 2. And as you can see in this drop-down window, I'm routed to Expand 2, 1, into Channel 1. So, now that we know that we're connected here, we can go ahead and record Enable the Track. And if we play on the keyboard, we should hear some sounds. Now that we know that the instrument is connected properly, let's go ahead and go through some different sounds that are available in this virtual instrument. Now you can go to the presets, to the drop-down menu here, and you'll see a huge library of different sounds that are in different folders. And you can definitely select any of the sounds by clicking on the different sounds. You can also press the plus and minus button to move between the sounds that are next to each other. And my favorite way to be able to go through a variety of sounds is to use the plugin setting select. This window allows us to be able to click on a bunch of different sounds quickly, and we can also use the keyboard to toggle between the different sounds. Also, there is an option down here that will have the patches increment to the next one according to the time you set. For example, every three seconds. This makes it easy if you're trying to find a sound by yourself, you can click that option and go ahead and play on the keyboard while it switches through different sounds. Let's go ahead and choose a sound. I'm going to pick Majestic, click Done, and let's go ahead and record some MIDI. So one thing that can help a lot if you're trying to record yourself is to use a feature known as MIDI Wait for Note. And that is this button located right here on the transport window. When that is on, if you press record, you'll hear the metronome start. But Pro Tools won't start recording until you hit a note. So let's go ahead and record, and I will record from my piano keyboard.
Now that we've been able to record some MIDI, let's talk about MIDI merge. MIDI merge can be toggled on and off on the numeric keypad by pressing 9. And what this option does is it either gives you the option to be able to record over your previous MIDI clip or to actually record on top of it, merging your new notes with the old notes. So for example, if I turn MIDI merge off and I go to record again, you will see that it will replace what I currently have there. Let's go ahead and undo that by pressing Command Z. Now let's go ahead and have MIDI merge on and we'll record again and this time I will put some additional notes up higher. So as you can see, as I recorded again, it merged my new notes with the old notes.